So what we're looking at here is the Heritage Auctions app on, um, on my tablet. And unfortunately, it only it won't rotate. It only will go in this direction. So I guess it'll be this will be one of those narrow videos. And um, so uh, what I wanted to look at was my tracked lots. There was a bunch of lots back in January. Lots meaning just pieces of original artwork. That's what I'm looking at, original comic book artwork. A bunch of pieces of original artwork that I clicked track this on. And now a lot of them, as of yesterday, I think, have gone up for actual auction. So I'm starting to see... <laughs> where the prices are going. And there's still, I think, five or six days in, left in the auction. So um, many of the prices will get much higher than this. And so I picked a bunch of stuff that is, for the most part, well out of my reach. Let's take a look. So here are the current tracked lots. And um, so at the very top is a Neil Adams, Tom Palmer, Avengers 93, The Vision and Ant-Man original art page number 12 this is a piece a page out of the very first comic I ever read as a kid age 10 1971 so uh, not only is it Neil Adams which is makes it great art but it's of huge nostalgic quality for me but I don't know if I want to pay four thousand dollars well it's gonna be a lot more than four what's the, the current price is four thousand six hundred dollars actually five thousand five hundred and twenty dollars with the bp i forget what the bp stands for the buyer's premium as they call it now on top of the buyer's premium you're going to pay a shipping fee and if you pay with a credit card you're going to pay a credit card fee so at a minimum right now this is probably five hundred and sixty dollars um sorry five what am i saying five thousand six hundred dollars right now and, oh, man, the auction ends in 18 days, so I can only imagine how high that price is going to go. But this is an amazing piece of art um, where the where Ant-Man, Hank Pym, has gone inside the Vision, who's lying here on a table, to figure out what's wrong with him. And he's being attacked by the Vision's auto robotic autoimmune system. Um, so... Uh, Man, great issue, great art. I, I, I don't know where this is going. I think in my imagination, you know, maybe I could stretch my wallet and buy like a $2,000 piece of artwork. Um, but if I'm ever going to man up and get, get the artwork of, you know, the things that are most important to me, maybe I have to spend more. Here's a classic John Buscema cover featuring Kazar and... Uh, you know, I probably shouldn't even be tracking covers because those always get very expensive. So at the moment, it costs about the same amount, 5520 if you include the buyer's premium. Lucky buyer, you get a premium. Um, and I understand they also take fees from the seller, so uh, the whole thing seems a bit dicey to me. But anyway, so uh, this, again, 18 days left, it's already up to... Uh, over $5,000 with that buyer's premium. But awesome cover, classic, very classic. And another one that I was looking at was this incredible Avengers cover. Uh, it doesn't look like original art here because it's not yellowed or anything, although there, there's a little bit of yellowing there. Um, man, do I love this cover. I love the Avengers of this period. And uh, it's Sal Buscema at, at some of his best. But again, it's, it's you know, up even higher than those other two, uh, I guess because it is a cover. Although it's a, and a cover of an icon, a more iconic book from that period that people who do have money would be nostalgic for. So it's already up to $7,500. Lord knows. Maybe I'll do a follow-up of this in 18 days. That might be interesting. So another one that I was very interested in was this cover to the Defenders. Um, I, got, I remember getting this comic book. I had a subscription to the Defenders, so I probably got this folded in half in a uh, brown paper wrapper 
in my mailbox out in the country. We lived on a rural route. But, uh, and more Sal Busema. Very lovely cover. Great storytelling. Mind Slaves of the Red Ghost. And this one is actually even higher. Up at, I'm amazed this is higher than, than Sal's Avengers cover. But who knows well they're, where they end up in 18 days. Why did I think there was only five days left on these? Um, this one is up to $8,700 already. Um, hey, I used to get so excited whenever I got a comic book with the Silver Surfer on the cover. The Surfer's own comic had already ended by the time I started reading and collecting as a kid. Next, we've got Steve Ditko. And I knew that the chances that I could afford a Steve Ditko Spider-Man page were low, but I didn't know how quickly this would go up so high. Um, I'm not sure what the difference between that picture and that picture is, but they always include these two pictures. One is more cropped than the other. So this one is already up to the real price with that lovely buyer's premium of 46800 So basically you're looking at $47,000. With postage and fees, and that's just the beginning. Where will this go in another 18 days? I guess I'll keep saying that. Here's one that seems more affordable now after looking at the Steve Ditko. This is Jack Kirby from his uh, lesser period at Marvel, his return in the 70s. But this is an incredible uh, double-page spread, as almost all of Kirby's double-page spreads were incredible. Um, if I thought that it would stay at this price, I suppose I might consider, you know, this ultimate. Sp oh, I was trying to turn the thing sideways and it doesn't work. This ultimate splurge in uh, getting a Kirby double page spread that probably this is a cheaper one than ones one will find uh, in his DC work or his earlier, um, earlier Marvel work. But um, so it's currently about five thousand dollars, and in eighteen days, wonder where it'll be. Here's a Kirby cover that he did from the same period. He did a lot of covers, apparently most of them uh, from a sketch by someone at the. He didn't read the actual comic, but someone at the bullpen made a sketch for him, sent it out to him, and he would just base his drawing on that sketch, I think often Al Milgram. So um, in a sense, this may be less pure Kirby, but still a really fun cover. And this might be a more affordable way to get a Kirby cover at only uh, $6,300 now at this early stage of the auction. <laughs> Covers, I guess, are just pretty much out of my reach unless there's something quite obscure. Here's a, another one that I... Uh, I'm drooling over. It's only up to $18,000 so far. A early John Romita Spider-Man, where he is fighting J. Jonah Jameson's son. The inking doesn't look as strong to me as some other, maybe later, John Romita. It's not John Romita's inking, I assume it is. Um, oh, maybe it is John Romita inking. They don't list an inker here. So, uh... Anyway, it's still very cool. I'd love to own it, but I'm, I can't imagine I'm going to spend a, well above $18,000 on that. And here's another, um, another Romita Spider-Man. This one from number 42, I guess also inked. That's from the same issue. Yeah. Romita's work still looks a touch Ditko-ish at this point. Um, and it's, it's a little cheaper than the Steve Ditko artwork, only 18600 so far. Oh, now here is something that would be so awesome to own, and I can't believe it's already going for not 125000 as if you look at the big print and think 125000 It's already going for $150,000 with 18 days to go. But man, is this an iconic, wonderful cover. This is John Romita at his very peak. I love it. Man, though, I mean, even if I, let's say I had $20 million, would I want to spend, this is going to go up to at least $200,000. Would 
but I want to spend two hundred thousand dollars on one item it's hard to imagine that I mean it's hard to imagine how rich you've got to be to want to buy a two hundred thousand dollar piece of artwork let's see here's another John Romita cover that is a relative bargain at forty two thousand dollars rocked by the shocker it's certainly a cool cover but yeah no long nowhere near the um, excitement of that kingpin cover very cool design though I mean I definitely appreciate it as a cover I just can see why it's going for uh, considerably less what about a third of the price or even less than a third of the price here's a page of Wally Wood mad and again something that after looking at those ultra expensive issues uh, makes you think it's a deal but of course uh, you got to think twice before you spend four thousand dollars on a single item. Um, this is spoofing uh, Super Duper Man getting beat up by their version, Mad Magazine's version of uh, Captain Marvel. I forget what they call him. This is a great little spoof. I've always, I loved reading it in the past. Um, people don't think about Wally Wood at Mad Magazine, but he was he was in the thick of it at Mad Magazine and did some great work. I'd love to own some Wally Wood, but probably not this piece. Because um, really, with that buyer's premium, close to $5,000. Here's a, a classic splash page of Wally Wood's from the EC Science Fiction Days from Weird Science, 1953. It's up to over $19,000 already. Man, that's a crazy scene. Um, you know, if I did have $19,000 to spend on a Wallywood image, I think I'd wait for a different one than this. But, you know, when I, when I clicked on it to track it before there was any prices, I, I had no idea what a Wallywood work would cost. Here's a more affordable one. This is actually a beautiful piece. Adults only. Look away if you're a child and have never seen pubic hair before. Um... A beautiful, what are they calling this? This is Beauty and the Beast, uh, Adam and Eve poster. So it's currently going for six thousand six hundred. Um, yeah, I I couldn't imagine spending that much money, even though I love love this picture. But I would it would be nice to own some Hollywood. I don't know if it will ever happen. Here is a r relatively. <laughs> affordable now again over two thousand dollars which um, I tend to think of two thousand dollars as like what I might spend for something that I am totally bonkers about as kind of a major major thing and assume that I'd be able to resell it someday for at least that much money um, but here is one of those uh, more obscure Neil Adams House of Secrets uh, Images, I, I gotta say I'm a bit tempted, but it'll be it'll go much higher than this, right? So I couldn't. And if I'm gonna spend that two imaginary two thousand dollars, maybe I should wait for just the right thing. But very cool. I love his his mystery covers, and I should keep an eye out on those. Here we have a actual interior page only going for about nine hundred and ninety dollars so it, over a thousand dollars when you again oh this one's got 19 days left on the bidding um, a nice solid John Buscema action page on, on Submariner but yeah so I'm guessing this will be up in the two th over two thousand range by the in 19 days maybe quite a bit more Let's see what else we got here and more John Buscema. So I search on different artists and then I click on them to track them. Um, here only at $690 is a page from Avengers 83. Um, I guess it doesn't have the more major characters in it. It's got Black Panther and Claw and what's this guy's name? Not Tor Whirlwind or something like that um, and Silver Surfer. Love the way they drew the speed, Silver Surfer speeding around back then, um, the way John Buscema did it. And I guess it came out of, somewhat out of the way uh, Jack Kirby did it. <coughs> uh, next up, more John Buscema. Okay, this is 
Well, no, <laughs> I think this is higher than I last looked at it. Way up there at, uh, wait, that was without the buyer's premium, 4,400. I keep forgetting to look at that, that buyer's premium there, 5,280. So roughly $5,300 already. I, re I think I owned this book when I was a kid. It's a great cover. Um, yep, John Buscema doing what he does best, or one of the things he does best. Um, so, and then here is more John. I got a lot of John Buscema here. Here's a John Buscema Fantastic Four page. Um, must be from the very early 70s, 1971. You ever even get the indicia on this one. Uh, when Stan Lee was still writing the Fantastic Four, so the early post Jack Kirby period. Um, what was this going for? But who shall stop the overmind? That was an intense little uh, arc that Stan Lee and John Buscema did. This is currently only going for uh, in the 1700 range. So probably 1800 with all the other fees added on. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see if that one goes up high, but it's not one that excites me as much as some of these other John Buscemas. Here's an interesting John Buscema Conan splash page, only at roughly $500 right now, from uh, later in the Conan run. I don't know if Dan Atkins is the right inker for John Buscema, although he's an inker I've always loved. Um, I don't know, Conan's face looks a little less looks a little stiff there the line the line work doesn't strike me just right but and it, it's it's an otter this is an otter splash page especially for John Buscema so um if the price stayed in this range though it, it might be something I would take seriously but again 19 days till it, it will be down here's another Steve Ditko uh the Incredible Hulk much cheaper than uh, than the Fantastic Four. I think this page might have been in the, a recent True Believers issue. Um, I'm not 100% positive, but I think that's, uh, is, is that what Rick Jones looked like back then when Steve Ditko drew him anyway. I love this, uh, this sequence with the Hulk's fist coming through. Uh, yeah, so that would be, there is ways to get Ditko that one could, well, I don't think I would go for $7,500 plus, again, 19 days to go. But um, there is Ditko that is cheaper than Spider-Man. Here's a, here's a Jack Kirby that doesn't look like Jack Kirby, and it's only $2,100 so far, uh, inked by Tom Sutton, which is interesting. I don't think too often you see Kirby inked by Tom Sutton. But Tom Sutton did do a lot of work on the... Um, not Brand Eck magazine, so he had a, a knack for satire. So perhaps they put him on Kirby to give him that satire, but for whatever, maybe because Kirby was drawing satire, it just doesn't have that Kirby look to it. So I can understand why it's so much cheaper than other Kirby pages, but then I'm less excited about getting it, even at twenty a mere $2,100 so far. Here's a, this is a pretty awesome cover at only about $4,000 so far. This is, I guess, some of Jack Kirby's last comic book work, or definitely last DC work when he came back and helped out with the Superpower series, which <coughs> allowed them under their new newer deals for creators to give Kirby... Um, uh, what do you call it, royalties on his characters and on his work. It was sort of a back-end deal that the people working at DC worked out so that their new contracts would allow them to give Kirby a better deal. Probably one of the few times Kirby's drawn The Flash. That looks pretty cool there. Yeah, I would love to own that cover. So, uh, but again, as I was saying, I think of $2,000 as a super splurge. So this is already up to 4000 so everything I picked, or tons of stuff I picked um, this time around, are unlikely that I will be in the running for these. Here's a um, John Ramita, John Ramita Sr. doing uh, Daredevil. So I guess even, I think that would mean previous to, 
prior to his doing um, any Spider-Man. Uh, so I thought, well, maybe I can keep an eye on that. It's I like this panel up here quite a bit. It's not prime Romita, I suppose. Uh, of ink by Frank Giacoa as Frankie Ray. Um, that's a that's a good inker. So it's it'll probably be well over a thousand dollars. I don't know how high by the time the ni nineteen days are up. This is interesting to me. I, mean, I didn't think I could afford a Jim Starenko page, and I probably can't. It's already up to, with the buyer's premium, up to $4,800. But this is a pretty amazing Jim Starenko page, uh, and I thought it would cost even more. Um, but we'll see how the market drives it up. It's got 19 days to go over, sorry, over the 4000 mark that it's at at the moment. Here's more Wally Wood from Weird Science. So back to his, from 1953, um, his classic days doing science fiction art for EC Comics. This would be a lovely, kind of a perfect Wally Wood thing to own. When I look at it, I can just see all these underground comics, which I actually read before I read Wally Wood, that, that just drew directly from this look. What's it up to? It's up to a mere roughly $5,000. <laughs> Busema and S John and Sal on a Silver Surfer page. Now, this also surprised me. I thought this would be higher at this point. I mean, I don't have a lot of experience watching this art. I just, you know, guess based on what I think might be popular. And now I see the reason looking at it. There is no Silver Surfer on this page. So I guess. That reduces the value of a page a lot if it doesn't have any major um, major artists on it. It's very nice artwork by John Buscema and his brother. So it, if I were willing to get some jo John Buscema without any major characters in it, although I think, who's this guy here? Is that supposed to be a version of Dracula and that's supposed to be Frankenstein's monster or sort of? I don't know. Anyway, looks interesting. And then we've got um, this cover that is still in the affordable, <laughs> relatively speaking, affordable range. You can see that I bid on it, actually, um, and I'm al I am already lost. Whether I'll bid again, I don't know. I think it's a pretty beautiful cover by um, Busema and Ernie Chan, or Ernie Chua. The line work just looks really nice. Um, I think because it's from a classics illustrated style comic, it's just not what collectors really want. They want Busema doing the major characters. So it's only now uh, $372 uh, plus postage and fees. So you're looking at about $400 or a little more. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. I don't know if I want to have John Busema illustrating the Iliad. Sounds kind of cool when I say it. Here's some Conan that's only up to $71. I wonder what the problem is here. It's got a lot of Conan in it. It'll probably go up quite a bit higher, but I've noticed that things from the later Savage Sword of Conan, and this is number 93, go for a lot less than stuff from the earlier period. And uh, that makes sense. I think uh, Busema's best work was in the earlier period of his Conan work. But that seems potentially affordable have to think about that. It's, they, they include Rudy Nebrez as one of the inkers, and he, he is a great inker, but it looks a lot more like Ernie Chan than Rudy Nebrez to me. Maybe Nebrez added in the gray tones or something. I wonder what's, what's going on there. Although Nebrez is listed before, and I'm probably pronouncing Nebrez completely wrong, before Ernie Chan. Okay, here's much later John Buscema from uh, 1986 on one of his many returns to the Avengers, and it seems less exciting to people. It's got great inking by Tom Palmer. Um, it's a sequence with, I guess, just Hercules and, is that w Wanda here, or is that someone else, that woman? And that's Kang the Conqueror. It's not at all a bad 
this is a kind of a cool page, $420. That's still, that's not chump change. <laughs> I don't know. And um, here's John Busama with Jack Abel. Now this I clicked on just, I th sometimes when you track them, they don't even show the page yet. And I think that was the case here. It said John Buscema, Jack Abel. I like Jack Abel as an inker. I like John Buscema, of course, doing a Silver Surfer story. Um, so far, only up to $252. Uh, you can see the real wide range of prices on art. But the th I think the reason why is this is not this is not what you think of when you think of John Buscema art. It just barely looks like his drawing style, and it's a very sedate page. And he used to give even sedate scenes kind of a sense of drama more than you get here. What's the date on this? It's uh, 1990, so it's late in John Buscema's life, and he's going for different effects than he used to back in the Bronze Age. <coughs> Excuse me. So you, I have a lot of things I'm tracking. Here's Sal Buscema with Coletta inking, considered one of the burst, worst inkers of the Bronze Age and, and Silver Age. Um, sometimes it seems unfair, sometimes it seems justified that. From 1975, 20 more days, so right now it's up to $250. Uh, it's not such a dynamic page, although this is a really fun panel. And it's got Valkyrie in it, who I definitely am a fan of Valkyrie, but it seems Everything looks kind of small and unexciting on this page. I suppose that might be why it hasn't been bid up higher. Then I was looking at a bunch of Dan, uh, not Dan Atkins, a bunch of Gene Colan. This one inked by Dan Atkins. It looks quite nice. Um, a Submariner page. His chest is going a little crazy there. Um, but anyway, a cool page and only around $500 <laughs> only. And then we've got Gene Colan and um, the classic inker Joe Sinnott doing Captain America, but there's no Captain America on this page. There is the Falcon. I wonder if this is from that issue that was the first appearance of the Falcon. There's the Falcon before he put the costume on. So that is interesting. And that's only going for about $325. Here's a Gene Colan doing Cap another Gene Colan doing Captain America with Joe Sinnott, uh, going for three hundred seventy-two dollars at the moment. Nineteen sixty-nine. Falcon in red. There's probably no Captain America on this page, right? There's the Falcon in costume now, but no Captain America on this page. That's the the combination of those two artists was very interesting. <laughs> Let's see, and then Gene Cullen and Sid Shores on Daredevil at only $250 at the moment. No, well, it is Daredevil on the page, but it doesn't look very Daredevil-ish. I, I think that's Daredevil there, and then that's Daredevil's back. I don't even know who this villain he's fighting is. Capricorn from the, from the um, horoscope villains. There's another one of the horoscope villains there, I guess. Interesting. So, um, yeah, I like that page. It's only $250. I have to keep an eye on that, whether that goes up a whole lot more. Gene Colan and Alfredo Alcala on Batman. You can actually see here that I am the current high bidder. So maybe I will end up owning this page. Gene Colan's work on Batman somehow was not, was often not as satisfying as the work he did back at Marvel. But I like this page, and I definitely like the idea of, of getting some Alfredo Alcala, too. Okay, here's one that I think I clicked on to track before I knew what it looked like. And even though it's Will Eisner, it's pretty much just all lettering. You get part of a pumpkin. You get the gravestone with Will Eisner's signature on it. You get a cat. And the rest is all lettering. So usually a Will Eisner page, I think, would go for at least $4,000. But not this one. It's going for about 336 at with 20 days to go. And um, there's a bunch of Jack Kirby. Only 2,280 so far. Uh, the Demon. 
that would be tempting if I wanted to spend money. Um, again, uh, pretty dynamic page for anyone else, but for Jack Kirby, it's, it's not too dynamic, except for maybe that panel there. Uh, I love the demon by Jack Kirby, though. And here he is doing Commandy. So I wonder how high these ones, because they're not very high yet compared to other stuff, these ones from his DC period. Uh, Commandy page inked by D. Bruce Berry, who uh, unfortunately lives in the shadow of, of Mike Royer as an inker of, of Kirby. Still a fun page with uh, Commandy and friends being attacked by flying, talking sharks. Huh. And that one's only up to about 1300 at the moment. And then OMAC with Mike Royer inks up to only 720. There's probably no OMAC on the page. That's right. It's all this guy, I've, Dr. Scuba, who ended up being one of OMAC's main villains, but is not very well remembered today. Probably rightly so, uh, starting with that dumb name, Dr. Scuba. But this has lots of cool stuff on it. Some Kirby machinery, some crazy Kirby faces. I like it. Oh, and it looks like it's got Kirby's signature. I don't know if that adds anything to artwork, unlike comics, to have a Jack Kirby signature on a piece of original art. Is that make it valuable? Um, so it's up to about 720. I am the highest bidder on this. I expect to be outbidded, and someone else will get this, but I decided to just throw in a bid there. <coughs> Another Wally Wood. This time from something called Incredible Science Fiction. I never heard of that one, but it says it's EC from 56. This would be a lovely one to own. Bunch of men running around in loincloths. Can't beat that. Um, and what was the price? It's up to $372. So that's much cheaper than that, that splash page by Wallywood. And here's something from a Wallywood, I think, sort of a above ground or you know ground level or underground comic the wizard king from 1978 up to only 150 at the moment let's see where that goes i love that panel there and that one's pretty cool ah wallywood um yeah so that's cool and that's it that's the end of that stuff Here's a bunch of closed ones. Oh, no closed items. Here's ones that oh, are in the future. Only one, I guess. Uh, image not available. Jack Kirby Super Troopers illustration original art. So I just followed that because I wanted to then see what the... It, this one doesn't open till March. Image coming soon. So what I'll probably do is start searching again because if I don't have a lot of my tracked stuff that probably means I'm guessing that there will be more stuff added um, but I will end this in just a moment Jack Kirby let's see see I just didn't even track this one with the Hulk because I figured I would not be able to afford it here's a Jack Kirby Don Heck Mike Esposito so it's really only Jack Kirby layouts it'll look like Don Heck Um, stuff that's not that needs to be tracked. <clears throat> I could track this one, this uh, poster of the Super Scroll, and this one, a uh, splash page from Amazing Adventures. I maybe, I mean, I know that I won't be able to afford that one, but that might be fun to see where it goes. Here's a print. I could track a print, but I'm not really interested in prints unless they were really cheap. Eric Larson, I don't know what that's doing under Jack Kirby. Jim Starenko and Joe Sinnott, currently at $3,700. You know, I'm curious about that one, but I, of course I don't have $3,700, but yeah, and if I did have $3,700, even though that's a cool image, I don't think I would, I would go for that. But why did that come up under Jack Kirby? So. Somewhere in the description, they must mention Jack Kirby. You don't have to look far to see the Jack Kirby influence. That's why that came up. 
Okay, so anyone else out there buy original art, have thoughts? How high would you go? Who who pays one hundred and fifty thousand, hundred two hundred thousand dollars for these you know iconic covers like that, John Romita? I mean, God knows how high that John Romita cover will go. The one with the kingpin. Oh, this is bids. Things I'm losing. Okay, so I will be back with another video sometime soon. Talk to you all later. Bye bye.